Welcome back. We find ourselves in the middle of a month of Mailbag Mondays. Yay! Today, the beer that I will be sampling along with this is Diesel Fitter Stout from Park Brewing in Winnipeg. Roasty and malty and dark. The 65 IBU for those who are playing along at home. Very nice indeed. First item in is plastic sheet. Oh, goody. Wonder what kind of a plastic sheet it isn't. Ah, it's actually a module. Cool. It is specifically a uh, D1 Mini data logger shield. Real time clock and micro SD. So there is the battery to power the real time clock. It's a CR220, it says, which I don't think I have. Hmm. And on the back side is the data logger function. There is an SD card. Uh, there is a crystal that is slightly mangled. And there is uh, the brains of the operation. Hmm. Is that chip both the real-time clock chip and the SD, or is it separate functions? DS1307. I think that's a real-time clock chip which means that I guess it's just handling the uh, SD card directly. So there's not much to an SD card uh, reader. Data log shield for Wi-Fi D1 Mini RTC DS1307 micro SD for Arduino US. Not sure what US means in this case. I got it from DIY Electronic. I got it at auction for $1.31, which is about 99 American cents or something like that. Uh, free shipping, of course. So it can save data files onto any FAT16 or FAT32 formatted micro SD card, and it has an RTC that you can use in your in your code to timestamp your data. Cool. So the real time clock, you need uh, SEL and SDA, and the micro SD card, you need uh, clock data in out and uh, chip select. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, and they're all it tells me what uh, what pins they're on which is really handy now all I gotta do is wait for some D1 minis to come in because I used the last one that I have in stock on my Christmas lights off to a good start so far what is next it's an original IC driver times two an original as opposed to a copy one if we believe them okay it's a bunch of Oh, are those, um, oh, those aren't transistors. Those are a four pin device. Okay. And something else in this other bag here in blue. Let's look at what these guys are first. Hmm. It says D5252F and 1901. I'm going to guess 1901 is a date code. And nothing on the back at all. I guess I'm going to have to go to the listing to figure out what these guys are. 20 pieces QX5252F or QX5252 or 5252 f new and original IC driver. Uh, I originally got it f from this dude Planet-Earths who has all kinds of random weird stuff, but they don't have them right now, so I'm guessing it was an auction. I paid a dollar twelve for the twenty of them, and I'll link you to this search. But here's a random seller that's selling them. There's a whole bunch of people that are selling them, um, and buy it now seems to be about buck uh, thirty Canadian or ninety nine American. So, if you're interested, but none of them said what the hell it actually does. So I had to resort to going to the data sheet. So the data sheet tells me that it's a solar LED uh, powering chip thing. Runs from uh, just under one volt to one and a half volts. Uh, it can it can uh, push up to th not push. It can uh, supply up to three hundred milliamps, which is wild. So basically, you connect it like this: solar panel to the S bat pin, um, the actual battery to the bat pin with an inductor, a couple of LEDs in parallel. And uh, it's got a MOSFET inside that switches this on and off. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a little boost converter, a solar charger, and uh, 
and a darkness sensor off the solar panel all in one little package and 20 of them for basically a buck a couple of components so this is what's at the core of your average dollar store uh solar light well those could be fun to play with um uh, even if you don't use the solar you could probably just use them off a off a double a battery or something to power an led for quite some time anyway in this other package that i accidentally sliced off we have some blue hmm looks like oh no it's tubing oh okay this is uh this is heat shrink tubing that i think is sized for an 18650 hang on yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a heat shrink sleeve. So you, if you uh, are messing around and you happen to nick or remove the uh, heat shrink sleeving on your 18650, just to re-insulate it, you can put this over it and shrink it down. And uh, let's just actually see how shrinky it gets. Oh, wow, that goes way down. So that'll get down nice and tight and uh, make a nice uh, nice skin on your battery. And it's fairly strong stuff too, actually. Okay, that'll be handy to have uh, just in case. 18650 lithium-ion battery heat shrink tube wrap skin PVC shrinkable film tape sleep plep. Um... From that same uh, seller planet dash earth and they also don't have this in stock anymore which means i also probably got this at an auction uh i paid 99 cents for it uh and apparently you can get it in a multitude of colors fun next thing in we have uh controller it says this one shipped from malaysia and one of the other ones did as well and i think one of these other ones uh has estonia on it I'm trying to find other countries other than China to buy this stuff from just for some variety. Oh, what is controller? It is a remote control and a thing. Okay. It's even got a manual of sorts. That's good. LED mini dream color controller. Aha. Well, that pretty much gives it away, doesn't it? So we have an infrared remote control. It's got a little plastic thing in here in the battery. Is it actually battery included? No, they wouldn't include a battery, would they? Come on, get. What's well, pain in the? No, they didn't. Uh, CR. Is it 2025. Hmm. Does 2032 fit in there? I'll have to try it. Anyways, we have uh, different colors and modes there. We have an infrared receiver there. We have a DC input there and three output pins for RGB, which means this thing talks to NeoPixel strips. Hmm. DC, five volts, 24 volts, mini 21 key IR remote controller for WS2812B or WS2811 LED strip lights. I got mine from this dude pack sub boomy dash zero i got it for two dollars and 31 cents he's got some other ones right now but he doesn't seem to have that one for sale right now so i will link to this uh search here but here's the description from some random other seller not much that we don't already know just the input dc voltage uh battery and uh yeah and i don't know why it says common anode because that's not really how ws uh, leds work but anyway let's go play with it for a second shall we even though this says it's a cr 2025 a cr 2032 seems to fit so jam that in there and i've got a strip of neopixels aka ws 2812 just a meter long strip but that should be good for now because i probably want this thing flipped over so that the infrared uh window is actually facing here i've got them connected up to five volts from my power supply so on 
and they are doing what you'd expect NeoPixels to do. Okay, so can I turn it off? I can turn it back on. Okay, um, auto does whatever, blue does that. The different colors all do their magic. That's full white. That's a meter. So let's see. That's drawing one point, almost 1.8 amps. Wow. For a meter. Let's go to blue, red. That's just under an amp. And where's a green? I guess there's a green. Green? Huh? There's green. Okay. Yeah, so they're just shy of an amp each. Okay. And brightness up, brightness down. Yeah, that, that all works. Okay. Very cool. So I, I see people on Reddit all, all the time asking, where can I get a simple controller for NeoPixels for WS2812s? There you go right there. And it was cheap. Okay, we have next expansion board module. A small one. A single transistor. Dell is 18B20. Oh, that's not a transistor. This is something kind of bizarre and cool. Dallas DS18B2018B20 B20, TO92 thermometer temperature sensor. I got this thing from Good Module. I got it at auction for 55 cents. Um, they're currently selling one for $1.59. Um, I noticed when I was searching for this listing, there's others for auction right now for fairly cheap and uh, multi-packs and stuff like that. But what makes this an in such an interesting little temperature sensor? It uses a unique one-wire interface requiring only one pin for communication which is fine, I guess. Um, but you can actually use the, there's a couple modes you can use them. You can give them uh, power on ground and then there's one bidirectional data pin, which is sort of interesting. But the other mode, you can give it just ground and the communication wire and it will derive its power from the communication line. So as long as you've got a common ground in a system, you can... Uh, you can run a single wire from your controller to this thing. And the other thing, you can put them on a bus, on that single wire, you can put them on a bus and you can address each one by its, uh, by its unique serial number. So you can put a whole bunch of them scattered around your environment. I'm not sure how long the bus can be, but you can put a whole bunch of them out there and uh, talk to them individual with just a single wire running around the room or running around the place which is pretty damn cool. So there's only a couple of applications where that one wire protocol gets used. One of them is in those temperature sensors and the other one is in these little button uh, things. These are a little uh, data thing and um, they get used for keys, for identification, that kind of stuff uh, for a lot, turning on and off uh, alarm systems. Oh, I didn't know that. Apple's MagSafe thing uh, uses the one-wire protocol as well. Okay, so there's a third different way that it, that it gets used, but really it's not used all that often. It says here that with, uh, with special bridge drivers and stuff, you can run them up to 100 meters or up to 300 meters on twisted pair. Wow, that's nuts. Also interesting is that there is a library for it for Arduino which is the real reason that I got it just to play with. Uh, there's actually an application that we use them at, at work. There's one piece of equipment that uses them, the temperature sensor to monitor cabinet temperatures. Um, they've been a little bit hard to get from that manufacturer. So I figured if I could uh, make this one work and also if I can make up some kind of an Arduino box to just test them to make sure that they're installed properly and working properly at work, it might be handy. Yeah, here it's talking about that uh, that parasitic power option. Um, so that works up to 20 feet away from an Arduino. That's pretty slick. I'll have to play with that in the future. 
In a few months, somebody remind me in the comments that I've forgotten to do this uh, and I'll, I'll try and get around to it, okay? And the last thing in, we have light. What kind of a light did I order? Ooh, a horribly crushed one. Well, that sucks. Thank you, post office. EU? Really? Hmm. Oh, well, it looks like it's not damaged anyways. Uh, let me go find my adapter and I'll check the listing while I'm at it and then we'll come back and uh, see what that does. LED bedroom baby night light EU US plug auto LED induction sensor control light. Um, I got it from Perfect Store 111. They've got a bunch of the round ones like I got up for auction right now. But those auctions are going to expire by the time you see this. So I've just uh, linked to one that they've got on Buy It Now, which is a square one. Um, currently, their Buy It Now price is buck thirty-five Canadian. I paid $0.93 cents at auction. And most of their auctions are running right in around that price right now anyway for the round ones. And they also got square ones and heart-shaped ones. Unfortunately, um, I got the EU one, which I wasn't really intending to, but whatever. Um... That may have been a shipping error. That might have been me not reading the listing properly. It says it works all the way from 110 to 250 volts, so I should be able to just use an adapter, I think. Uh, colors, yeah, various colors, whatever. Doesn't say much. The light becomes dim in the room. The lamp will auto open. Power saving, right? So it's a, a light controlled uh, night light. This is also my first opportunity to use my new uh, power meter. So this should be exciting. How many watts do you think this thing will do? Oh yeah, the other thing, I get to use the death adapter. How exciting. So what's going to happen when we plug this in? Nothing because, hmm, because it's too bright in here? 0.1 watts, okay. And if we cover the photo cell, nothing continues to happen. Cover something a bit more opaque than my finger. No. Hmm. There we go. Completely dark in it. There we go. It's still only drawing 0.1 watts. Ha. <laughs> 9 milliamps and a power factor that it just can't read. It's so low. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess there's nothing for... Should I take this thing apart right now? No, nah, I'll save it for another video to take it apart. But clearly it's not... Uh, well, yeah, it, it's drawing so little power, it's sort of below the threshold of the meter even to read it. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday. Quite the, uh, quite the assortment as often happens so what uh transit times this nightlife guy took one month to get here these uh led driver these yeah low voltage led drivers and the heat shrink took exactly one month as well this combination sd shield and uh, real-time clock took three and a half weeks this lighting controller over here and its remote control took four weeks as well. And, aha, the Dallas Semiconductor One Wire Temperature Sensor took three weeks. Well, that was fun. Um, that's going to be a fun teardown sometime in the future. This thing's going to be interesting to play with. Once I get another D1 Mini back in, that'll be good to play with. This is always useful. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. All right, well, thank you for watching. Those of you who had the patience to make it this far through the video, I always appreciate that. Uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me fund this nonsense. You guys are awesome and generous and just generally good people. I uh, really appreciate the help. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, the continuation of the month of Mailbag Mondays uh, will return in seven days.